I need something crazy. You've been there. And I'm from. Don't have anything that crazy. Morning. This is actually BJ's coffee. BJ came over here to do some ripping, uh, basically on places where we were driving through the field while we were tiling over here. So like where he's at right now, it's probably pretty compacted, drove, drove a lot of pickups through there. This is probably about as dry as this farm is going to get this spring, where we haven't tiled, so uh, he's going to do some ripping over here this morning. Here's the precious. See what kind of job he's doing here with the zone builder. Oh yeah, there's the compaction. You can see it moving the ground up right there. That's what we want. This will be good and soft. And the good news is the zone builder with this basket. It really does get the cloths down pretty good. Does a really good job there. Ground can be a little bit drier, but like I say, this is about as good as this is going to get. It definitely looks non-disruptive compared to compared to the tile plow. I mean, look at these cloths. It's like a boulder. Listen to this free-sounding beast. Yeah. Hey, uh, I was just talking with Ryan. What do you think about running that up the uh, laterals at some point? Mm, that's good. There goes Larry. Beans going to town. Beans may be 14 bucks, but those ones sure aren't. Well, it's still here. So, after a little bit of research, found out this tractor, you can Bluetooth a phone call. You cannot stream audio, though. So, in 2012, every phone had a, you know, an auxiliary jack. Not anymore. But hey, I got this little splitter that I used to use for live streams. It worked pretty good. Gotta have the tunes. Or in my case, the podcast. Much more of a podcast kind of guy. So this ground here... This is ground that we tried chisel plowing. We've had a lot of water issues in this spot. Uh, we've ripped it, we've used cover crops, and now we're trying chisel plowing it. I don't know if it's right or wrong, but anyways, right now it's dry. This is this will probably be wet later in the spring, so I'm trying to work down this chisel plowed ground. Don't have anything other than this turbo mat. So right or wrong, that's how we're working it down. If you want to see the action of this field getting worked, I believe that video was titled Plowing with my wife because she actually ran the chisel plow a little bit. Catchy title. Having to run a lot slower. Six mile an hour. So I'm not a big fan of plowing the ground. Don't like it. Not, not my thing. This was the last resort. Um, I don't think it's going to make any difference at all. I think that this ground had laid wet the last couple years because of record rainfalls and a flood. Last year it got grounded out because it flooded, the river flooded, and this is the lowest point on the farm, but we're also really far from anywhere to drain this water. So uh, it just is what it is. I don't really like chisel plowing, but here we are. But if we can grow a crop here, this will be one of the best pieces of dirt. So normally this would be one of the last fields that I would run this Turbomax over. For whatever reason, we always start on the top ground and work our way down no matter how dry it is. Well, that top ground's pretty much straight gravel. It dries out very efficiently, so while I can get down here, I'm coming down here. And also, I want to get this early, so maybe this will settle. This will probably be still another, I would say, 40 to 45 days before this gets planted into beans. Maybe this will settle pretty good by then, and uh, yeah, it'll be a nice seed bed. But I might have to hit it one more time with this just because a Turbo Max isn't the greatest finishing tool for going over chisel, chiseled plowed ground. 
but this has set for since early November, so it is fairly mellow. A lot of the clots, clods have worked themselves down, but I might have to hit it one more time because it's still very rough. One other thing to keep in mind, we never really had any deep freeze. I bet we didn't have frost more than six to seven inches down. So, is what it is. You can see these lines. That's where that chisel plow was. It was a very small chisel plow. I think it was only a nine shank. And those, those are basically the ridges. So that's the, each line is the end of the chisel plow. Looks like the meal wagon's here. I don't think she has the kids, so I guess we're having a tractor date. Teach her how to run this thing. I'm gonna go home and take a nap. Well, bless your little heart, you brought a bag of food. Feels like walking on the sand. Trying to make it awkward. I'm still bouncing around. I tried to get her to drive. She went out. She's reading a book. You're reading a book? What? Trying to read a book right here, right now, you'd get sick. So again, these streaks that you're seeing, this is not where the turbo max is set improperly. That is from the chisel plow. It might have not been set right or something because it did leave a ridge every pass which is now leaving these streaks as we're leveling them off. That's why I went with the chisel plow, or with the chisel plow passes, trying to just smooth those out instead of going at an angle. We would have threw dirt this way, we would have threw dirt that way. I thought this was the best course. What do you think? I think I need a snack. <laughs> well, I didn't eat all my lunch. Do you want that apple? Would you like the cracker? Look at all that gravel down there. Kayla, go look for arrowheads. All right, we're not looking for arrowheads. So we were tiling on one farm. This farm, on the other hand, opposite issue on most of it. So we got that wet slew over there, but right here, we could go for irrigation, not so much tile. If we owned the farm on the other side of Kayla's Suburban, I would definitely put irrigation here. But this field is about a mile, mile and a half long but it's very narrow, so it wouldn't be the most efficient center pivot kind of field. Looking at a camera. Getting all the angles of Kayla. I get you to start pressure washing in bikinis in November. Yes. Like the first part sounded really good, and then November But what if the bikini and the pressure washing took place in a heated shop? You heard it, folks. You're gonna have to endure me in a speedo. She's leaving me. And she's leaving my. He dropped my beef. Oh my god. Cutting down trees. Dax was here. I didn't think she was ever gonna leave. I don't like the way that looks. Trying to finish up these intros. Holy cow, it's bumpy. I miss the big yellow pillow I've been riding around on the last few years. Now George was going to ride with me, but I don't know that we're going to get to do much more. That don't look too good over there. That's it for today. It's only 2.30. We we're going to have to take a break for fuel, but I was hoping to get a little bit more done. But really, these last two days have been bonus days. It was supposed to start raining like Tuesday night, and this is Thursday. Side note, corn stalks look fairly pulverized now. So this thing that I'm pulling is called a vertical tillage tool. Uh, you're not really trying to throw a lot of dirt with the vertical tillage tool. You're basically just trying to manage residue, which is why it didn't do the greatest at leveling that up after the chisel plow. I don't really like a lot of heavy tillage, so that's why we use this. We use it just to manage residue. To be honest, I'm not a super huge fan of it either. Uh, we've kind of considered just getting away from it completely. Only problem is then, uh, two years later, we still have those same corn stalks kind of hanging around. So, 
Dad calls it a fad tillage. He's probably right. It's been a fad for about 10 years now, though. Well, since we got rained out, might as well check out the hoop barn. Looks like we have hoops. Don't think they're going to put the canvas up in the rain, though. And it's been a little bit too windy to stretch that canvas, so looks like they are all ready for the canvas, though. But there she is. Looks a lot bigger now. So that's a 60 by 120. If you're new to the channel, we're building that for fertilizer storage. So we're pretty pretty excited to have that. We're gonna be able to buy lime and fertilizer when prices are better versus when we need it because we don't have storage. Well, that rain was about like a Kentucky divorce. Quick, ferocious, and didn't last long. But it's over now and the sun's back out. So dad and I came over here. One thing we need to do, especially now that this fertilizer barn's about done, we need to get our tender truck out and First thing we need to do is peel that Bex logo off of there because we're not a Bex dealer. And then we need to get Ratcliffe's name off there and get ours on there. But I think the batteries might be dead in this truck, so we need to check the oil in it and uh, see if we need new batteries. Yeah, that's nice and handy. Let's see if we got any critters living in it. Don't want any creatures of the forest. No juice! Uh, Nothing. Nothing. Well guys, that's probably it for this one. We're gonna get some batteries for that truck and uh, yeah, we'll catch you in the next one.